What's up everybody? Well today I am here to bring to you another vacuum that is in my vacuum collection. This time it is of another Tacconi Upright. What I have for your viewing pleasure right here is a Ricard Superlight Sand Trap. This is one of the more rare examples of the Superlight that basically, in a nutshell, is the same thing as the Ricard Superlight R10P. If you are not familiar with that one, that one's the high-end model with the red hood, the lifetime belt with metal brush roll, and basically was the high-featured machine for Ricard of the time. Until later, Ricard would develop the R17 Superlight, which was basically a black hood version of the R10P, but it had its own specific rug plate meant for thick pile carpets so that it's easier to push on that. The R10 Sand Trap Edition was basically a limited production machine from Ricard. I wouldn't be surprised if they sold for a little bit more than the high featured R10P model while having nearly the exact same features as that, just a different colored hood. But regardless, this is a very uncommon R10 model for the Superlight. The other one I think is the R10D. If anyone knows that one, that one's the, the gold hood model with the metal brush roll, but that one unfortunately just has a regular stretch belt versus the lifetime belt, the R10P, this and the now R17 have. So I ended up getting this one from a pawn shop locally in my area for about $30. And this thing was in a pretty sorry state when I got it. When I got it, the bag that was in this was the completely incorrect one, so much to the point that the bag wasn't even sealing on right. And as such, the entire inside of the outer bag was literally caked in dust. While also this vacuum had worn out brush strips in the brush roll that warranted replacements, which I have now put in. And also the belt was almost shredded to pieces, which is a shame because this one was meant to have the lifetime belt on it which those are supposed to last nearly a lifetime. So after putting all of those replacements in and giving the outer bag a major clean out, here it is ready to make its grand return. And so let's go ahead and give a walkthrough of the machine. So this being from the R10 lineup of the Ricard Superlight, this does have some features that give it a nice upgrade over the RSL versions. One being this new handle design with rubber grips here at the top, at the top that unfortunately this one does have a little bit of wear right there, so a thing to happen to these as they age and as you can see the rubber is kind of flaking off but not a major deal it still works as is as you can see this does have a two-speed function the up is low speed and down is high speed I'm not really a fan of that orientation if I'm all honest if anything I wanted the down position to be low speed the up position to be high speed but to each his own but this actually still does have the two-speed function regardless. Another thing that the R10 has that's a lot different over the RSL 
is the outer bag design. I mean, besides, obviously, the different fabric, these outer bags are a bit more boxy compared to the more traditional cloth-style outer bag that you see on any direct air, lightweight, upright vacuum, even Oryx of the time, which these essentially were made to compete with the Oryx, essentially has to be lightweight, upright vacuums with much better cleaning performance. And we'll go over why that is later. But anyway, back to the outer bag, it's much more boxy design compared to the early, early models. You have your nice back-to-back Ricard R le logo on the front, which is pretty nice. You also do have dual zippers on this, which is interesting. So you basically unzip those to get access to your inner bag right here, which this is the bag that it runs. It is very large. That is one thing I do like about these. And it mounts on this little bag dock compartment like so. Very similar to what you see on an Auric. And as you will pull this out, it basically pulls a little tab that that seals the collar shut so no dust flies out into the air, very similar to how an Auric is designed. But the thing that's nice about these over the Auric is Auric, unfortunately, with their bag design, uses a, a cardboard collar. And over time, that can unfortunately wear and sometimes tear open and the seal doesn't work as effectively as this does with the plastic collar design. So, yeah, so as you slide this in, it'll latch in place and it'll grab a hold of that latch ready to seal it shut. And then right here is your much larger opening compared to the long, skinny, narrow design of the Auric, which this allows the machine to have much better airflow like that. And so anyway, so the bag seals in place like such, and it locks in like that. So as we move along down here, we have your very nice hunter green colored hood. That's one nice thing about these. The colors on these hoods for the super lights, as well as the equivalent Simplicity Freedom, they're just very nice colors. But to me, the Ricars just look so much better than the Freedoms. Particularly because I love the clear headlight lens on them versus the composite design of the Simplicity Freedom. But as you can see, you have your logos right here. This has, say, the Sand Trap. And it does come with a lifetime belt as well. And it is made in the USA, but however, this is really more assembled in the USA. This is made from globally outsourced components, as we will see later. And right here is actually a little indicator light that comes with the lifetime belt system. Basically, this is more of a Hall effect sensor that basically rides on the, the pulley of the belt, which basically acts as a serpentine system. So as the belt is turning, the brush will end from the motor. It'll basically turn that little sensor to allow this vacuum to function and still running. And what it's there for is when it detects a blockage or a jam in the brush roll, or any slowdown performance of the motor, it will actually trigger this and start blinking and shut the motor off to prevent the belt and the motor from damage. So that's very nice. I do love the indicator right here that, that will start blinking when it detects it and shuts the motor off, so that way you can check the blockage, then cycle the switch, and then you're good to go again. And so now let's go ahead and flip this thing underneath to show you the underside. So underneath is the brush roll for the cleaner. And this is Ricard's typical metal brush roll 
with replaceable brush strips on on either side, which I have replaced when I got this because the original bristles were very worn out and some were actually were actually missing bristles on certain sections of the strip. So I just threw in new replacements for safe measures. But you will notice the little edge cleaning brush right here on part of the brush roll are still there. They're all right, but as you can see, the length of those bristles don't really match the new brush strips, but you, I would rather just care about just the new brush strips. I could live without this, but that's just one thing to note about this. The only thing I do not like about this brush roll, and I never thought I would say this, is the is the bristle orientation. I don't know if you could see, but right down here is the suction path. And as you will notice, the bristles in their design actually will move the dirt away from the air path, which I don't know why Ricard designed it like this. I mean, I know they just essentially copy and pasted the metal brush roll design from their Vibrance series of vacuums that they've made for years, and earlier from the 8 series and I think even the the old 2000 series if anyone remembers those but they essentially copy and pasted that brush roll design adapted it a little bit for the super light but as a result the bristle design directs the dirt away from the suction channel which I really wish they made this backwards so the brush roll so the bristles move like this way so it'll more or less channel the dirt towards the air path right down there it's not a major deal but it's just one minor nuisance of this machine of course the agitation of this more than makes up for that the agitation on this thing is so powerful that it literally pulls the vacuum forward as you're vacuuming. There have been a lot of YouTube videos where these things literally will pull themselves across when it's standing in its upright position. And this one also does that, and I will probably go ahead and have to show you that later. But... Now we'll go ahead and show you the model number while I have you down here is this is the Rakar model R10 S A N D which literally spells the word sand basically this is nothing more than a green hooded R10 P which P for that one would stand for premium meaning that it's the top of the line one with the metal brush roll and the lifetime belt setup it's made in the USA with globally sourced components. And the serial number for this, if I am reading this correctly, 0514, would mean this is made in May of 2014. Comment down below if I'm reading the serial right, but I would like to believe, yes, it was made by that time. Because this machine looks fairly new, like 2010's new. So... 120 volts, 60 hertz, 5.5 amps on the motor, which is definitely bigger than an Auric, but it's not the amperage that makes the performance of this. I mean, yes, it draws one and a half more amps than a, than a standard Auric XL, which those draw only four amps. The motor itself is a whole lot larger than on an Auric. Add in to the fact that the fan impeller is also larger than an auric. And also the fill tube going up through it is also larger. So as a result, this thing generates much more suction and airflow than an auric, so it'll perform a lot better as a result. And as you can see, you do have a carry handle here on the back. And you also do have a pedal release right here as well. 
which is this was actually a recent add-on for the R10 lineup. The RSLs didn't come with it. You actually had to step on the cleaner to to release it into its vacuuming position. Also, the wheels are a little bit noticeably larger on the R10s than the RSLs. So that's just one thing to note. And right up here you have your nice long, I think this is a 36 foot power cord. So very long. It could be actually longer than that. I think it's may, this may be 40 feet, but again, I might be wrong. Don't quote me on that. So I think I've pretty much showed you all over this cleaner as much as I can. So let's get to the part you guys want to see, the turning on and running of this. So we will go ahead and release the cord here, which the only thing I don't like about this, and this is just a minor nitpick, is the cord releases from the bottom on these R10s. But that's okay, at least it still has a quick release anyway. And like I said, the cord is very long on this. That is one thing to love about them. Ugh, I hate it when this happens. See, this is why I always like to run my hand all the way down the length of the cord so I could get out any kinks or tangles, which we are probably in right now. You may have accidentally seen my face there. Good riddance. All right, now let's go ahead and plug this guy in. And now we will go ahead and turn this thing on and give you a demo of it running. So we're going to start this thing on low and then we will work it up to high speed. There it is on low speed and here is high speed. Yo, I don't think you guys will probably want to know that if this machine really pulls itself forward like it does in every YouTube video, so Watch this. Yep, it does. So, it just kind of gives you an idea of how powerful the agitation is on this. So, with that said, let's go ahead and turn this thing on and give you a demo of it cleaning.
These are really great machines. Don't let their small size and lightweight fool you. These things really pack a punch. But with that said, I hope you've enjoyed this video on the Ricar Sand Trap Super Light. Be sure and stay tuned, and don't forget to like, rate, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.